All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to give folks just a moment to get logged in and their audio hooked up. Um, but I am so glad that you are all here this evening for our webinar, our back to school webinar with CFR Education. Um, and we will get started in just a second as folks get themselves logged in and situated. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, we are talking about back to school with CFR education. Um, so scheduled for half an hour, we will absolutely get you in and out and on your way. Um, I'll wrap up the presentation within half an hour. Uh, we do have a little time for Q&A. If you wanna ask a question, use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Leave me a note there, uh, we'll get to it at the end. I'll answer as much as I can. Um, I do have a little bit of time so I can stick around past the bottom of the hour. If you have some questions and I haven't gotten to them yet, and you've got a couple minutes and you wanna stick around and, and we can chat a little bit more. I'm happy to do that. But I also know this is the busiest time of year. Um, I did it for a decade myself. I know you've all got a million things going on in your head. Um, so we want to keep this short and sweet. So thanks so much for being here. Let's dive in. Um, Council on Foreign Relations, we are an over 100 year old, nonpartisan, non governmental, independent think tank focused on foreign policy. Um, and CFR Education, um, we aim to close the global literacy gap that we know exists in our country. Um, our resources are accessible, accurate, and authoritative, and possibly the most important piece of information 100% free. Everything we're going to talk about tonight, completely free. You don't need a purchase order. You don't need permission from your supervisor. You don't need to go talk to your department chair. You and your students can check all this out without spending a dime. Um, we work on building the knowledge, skills, and perspective uh, that we know high school and higher ed students need in order to understand and engage with today's most pressing issues. Um, we're gonna spend the bulk of our time talking, checking on our website. And um, if you haven't heard or if you're, um, you know, new, we said I got a new website in the spring. We're thrilled about it. It looks like this. Um, and I'm gonna spend most of this half hour uh, showing you around. So you head to education.cfr.org. Um, here's where you land. Um, and the first thing that I wanna point out to you is, is right here in the top uh, menu bar. Um, if you're looking for resources uh, right away, something you can give to your students, um, something to show them to help them understand a, a global affairs topic, you're gonna to wanna to click on learn. It takes you right to our learning resources and scroll through, see uh, the various topics that we have resources for. Um, and let's imagine you are teaching your students about globalization. You're curious, what do we have um, about globalization? I know it's a really common topic, crops up in a lot of classes, um, you know, in a lot of different ways. Um, and here we are. Um, we have a number of different kinds of resources. Um, one that's really popular is our videos. Um, so for example, uh, it helps students understand something like a supply chain. Um, how do goods move around the world in the global supply chain? Um, we made a short video and we came up with something we thought would be really relevant to students. How do sneakers get made? Um, so you'll see our videos um, are embedded right in the page. Click. By the time you see them in stores, most products have traveled around the globe. Very few products come from just one place anymore. Even when a label says made in China or made in America, it's not quite that simple. These days, the majority of manufactured imports are bits and pieces of final products. A steel frame for a bicycle, salt for packing. I'll pause that there. I always wanna leave people wanting more, um, but I wanna point out a couple of things about this. Um, this video is less than four minutes, and that's the case with most of our videos. I think we, we aim for five or six minutes at the most. We really are not looking for something, uh, to create something where you're just gonna turn it on and turn out the lights and walk away and the kids are sort of you know bored staring at the TV. We wanna be short and sweet, get across a key idea, um, and then get out of your way as the teacher so that if you can have a conversation about what they just learned, do an activity, um, give them a reading that takes them into greater depth about how supply chains work, whatever it is that you need to do um, to get your, your curriculum where it needs to be. You'll notice also this is, this is simply embedded from YouTube. Um, so that means that we have all the great um, YouTube features. You see, I've already got closed captions on. Um, 
And of course you can fiddle with the speed of playback, all that other good stuff. Um, you can also play this video directly off of YouTube. Um, if you just go to YouTube, search for CFR education, all of our videos will show up there. If that's, if that's something easier for you um, in your setup. The last thing I'll point out um, is that we have right down here, you can download a transcript um, of the video. So if you've got students who uh, are going to benefit from having a printout of what's said in the video while they're watching it, um, that is there uh, for your use. Um, and so that's one example of you know, a video that we have, one way that we talk about globalization. And you'll see, you know, we've just a, just a really brief introduction um, you know, along with that video. But that's not all we have. Um, in addition to our great videos, um, we also have um, plenty of readings. Here's one, for example, about Hollywood movies and how globalization has affected them, particularly how the push to market Hollywood movies in China is shaping um, you know, how movies are made, how movies are marketed, um, and so on. Um, a couple of things I'll point out to you here. Um, so first of all, our, our readings, we try to keep them under about 2,000 words. Um, so the same approach with the videos. We don't want this to take over your students' time. Um, we want this to be something that you can easily integrate into your existing curriculum, your existing syllabus, the plan that you have. Um, we want to supplement. We want to help. Um, so for, again, we also want to make this really relevant. So we picked movies. What do, you know? What do students, teenagers, high school students, college students, uh, you know, what more could they be interested in? We also try to really rely on making our readings really visual. So here, I mean, this blew my mind when I first saw it, you know, the extent to which a lot of movies are making the majority of their money um, outside the United States. Um, and so it's easy to see how, um, you know, the, the needs of a foreign market are really shaping them. Um, it's a couple different ways of visualizing how much is being sold, you know, how much of these movies are making money abroad. Um, make some connections to some topics students either may, might already know or hopefully will know and get curious about, like the role the WTO played in uh, the opening of the Chinese market to Hollywood movies. Um, taking a look at, ooh, look, something, something changed here. You know, really, really clear. Um, and then learn a little bit about well, what is it that's getting banned here we have this, I think one of my favorite infographics on the website, um, helping students kind of visualize the kinds of things that, um, you know, that, that might get a movie banned in China and therefore Hollywood producers are likely to just try not to put in the movie in the first place. Um, you know, some of these are kind of obvious, right? Don't make fun of the Chinese government. Um, some may be a little less obvious, no ghosts, turns out to be a, a deeply held cultural, um, feature, um, those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, trying to help students really make this relevant to their, to what they know. Um, and then also, um, you know, easy for them to understand. Um, we have some examples of specific movies that had changes made to them. Um, some of these I had no idea, but they're movies I've seen kind of cool. Um, and then we wrap it up pretty quickly, give them something to think about. Next time you go to a movie, think about how globalization shaped it. Um, and there is our, you know, an example of, of a reading. We also have a number of timelines, right? A big part of what has gone on uh, with globalization, uh, we can chalk up to communications, changes in the way that, um, you know, we talk to each other and that information moves around the world, right? Globalization is absolutely about products moving around the world, but it's also very much about ideas and information moving around the world. So I know this is another, Favorite infographic of mine, um, you know, sending a letter by mail on a ship versus a telegraph versus the telephone uh, versus a tweet. And, uh, you know, how quickly does, does that happen? Um, and then we built this as a timeline. I know many, many, many of you are history teachers, right? It's far and away the biggest social studies course um, at the high school level. And certainly, um, you know, in all the different higher ed disciplines, some sort of historical grounding um, in the social studies is really valuable. Um, so this can be a way to help your students sort of find that historical context or make that connection to historical learning that they already have. Um, as we take students through, all right, what were these inventions? How did they happen? 
um, and how did they start to change the way that the world was connected. Um, so again, a great way, very visual, uh, it's a recording of um, fireside chat from Roosevelt, for example, great way to help students um, kind of survey some of the historical uh, context for some of the topics that we're talking about. Um, so those are learning resources, um, but you all presumably uh, teach in one form or another. Um, so it's one thing, as we all know, to have something to give students to read or to watch. Um, but you also need to, um, you know, help them to wrap their brains around some of these ideas. And so we also have teaching resources. I've just here in the menu bar at the top, instead of learn, I've clicked on teach. Um, and this is where we're going to find resources that are whose audience is all of you instructors of, of various kinds. Um, and again, exact same topics. Go through, pick what you want. Maybe we'll check out democracy and government. Um, that's not gonna be a big deal or anything this fall, I don't think. Uh, but just in case you have some questions about democracy and how government works, uh, maybe in November especially, um, you can see a whole variety of resources. The first thing I'll point you to, you can filter between high school and higher education. Um, so if you know what you're teaching, you wanna just stick to things that are gonna be most relevant to you, you can go ahead and click. Um, and you can see on the screen, um, particularly if I scroll down a little bit more, you can see on the screen um, that it's filtering different things are showing up. Um, so that's a great place for you to start. Um, a number of different things for us to check out. Um, I'll take you first um, to our lesson plans. These are typically aimed at high school instructors. Um, here, for example, is one uh, introduction to the forms of government. Maybe you want to help your students understand, you know, what do we mean by democracy? How's that different from authoritarianism? Those are all really great uh, concepts to help your students understand. Um, and hopefully this is a pretty uh, familiar format for a lesson plan. We tell you, we think this is, you know, going to take you about three periods. Obviously your mileage may vary. Some of you have, you know, different length periods to work with, but you know, you know what you need best. Um, some learning objectives, materials. Um, this link takes you to um, a collection of readings from CFR.org, from, excuse me, education.cfr.org, readings like the ones we were just looking at, um, around which this lesson plan is based. Um, but we also have some additional resources. Um, if your students are going to do better watching a video or reading an article, if they have a, have a handout to, you know, ask them some questions, um, help keep them on track and collecting the main ideas as they go, here's a Google Doc with some reading questions as they go. And you'll note, because it's a Google Doc, you are more than welcome to make a copy of this to your personal Google Drive or your school Google Drive. Um, make some edits. Maybe your students don't need seven reading questions for a five minute video, but two would be good. Go through and pick the two you need and delete the rest. Not a problem. Likewise, if like I did, you, you tend to run your classroom around a PowerPoint set of PowerPoint slides um, and you want to you know, be able to throw up some of the great infographics and the readings on the board so you can discuss them with your students more easily. Here's a, here is a slideshow um, of some of the great maps and infographics from the readings related to this lesson plan. And again, make a copy to your own Google Drive, grab the slides you need, rearrange the order, do what you need to do that's gonna make sense um, for your lesson. Um, this lesson plan also happens to involve students um, conducting a gallery walk with each other. Great activity if you've never tried it before. Um, and to help get them started, we have some slides and some worksheets that offer some templates um, so that you're ready to go and drop these into your Google Classroom, your LMS, uh, print them out, whatever, however your classroom works, they are there for you. So that's a lesson plan. We have a whole bunch of them on different topics. Um, every reading that we've got, we've got a related lesson plan. Um, so you can check that out. Um, but that's not all. We also have discussion questions. You're not looking for a step-by-step -step activity. You're just looking for a couple of good questions and you wanna, you wanna design your own class um, you know, around, around a good question or two. Um, we have essay and discussion questions. Um, and these come both, here's a set geared towards higher education. Great for you know, discussion sections, great for sort of a daily writing assignment kind of a thing. Um, or maybe is the basis for a longer essay question based on, on class readings. Um, and then similarly for high school, this is a high school set, um, 
great if you if you um, you know tend to run your class around um, around discussion or again if you if your students are at a stage where you're just going to give them a discussion question they got to go home and write a paragraph or two based on some readings about it we want to give you a running start for that okay possibly my favorite um, teaching resources though are our mini simulations um, these are great for active learning um, and again they're really short these are designed to be one class period, even less than one class period. Um, this one happens to be about the challenge of foreign cyber attacks um, and maintaining election security. It might be topical, you know. Um, and the way this is laid out, we have a short overview of what it's about. And then we have a situation. This is a case study, right? What do students need to know in order to have a conversation, to have a simulation of some policy making? So this lays out, well, what is a cyber attack and what's happened in the past? How have elections been affected by cyber attacks in the past? Past, What's being done about it? What could be done about it? And then we come to a decision point. Um, in this case, we're asking, students, we're asking students to imagine that they're members of the National Security Council. Um, and we want them to do contingency planning in this case. So maybe there will be a cyber attack. What's your game plan for if that? Things. That's what students are going to sit around the table and talk about. Um, we've laid out in this case four um, policy options. Um, so students might look at this, pick the one they think is best, explain why. Other students will disagree. They'll have a great conversation about it. Um, they're really creative. You can encourage them to throw out the options that we've given them and come up with a plan on their own that they think is going to be best. Um, some links to additional readings as well as some links throughout. I also wanted to point out, um, you'll notice, you know, some of these are, are, are links and this, this will take you to, in this case, a New York Times article with some more information. But if you look closely, you'll see some terms, some words have got this dotted underline, sort of dashed underline. Um, and what that is, right, here's cyber attacks, here's sanctions, that's our glossary. So Students are reading along, they're like, gosh, I don't really, I, you know, I've heard that word sanctions. I don't really know what it means, but I see it's got this dotted underline. They can click on it and a really quick gloss will come up enough that they can understand that word in context um, and then get back to the sentence they were reading um, and have a really good conversation about whether they think sanctions are a good way to respond to a cyber attack or not. Maybe, maybe not, but at least now they know what they are. Um, and they can participate in the conversation with their classmates. So those are mini simulations. Um, if that sounds really exciting to you, uh, but you wished for more, you wish that uh, you know maybe you had a two, three, four day experience that's project based, uh, we have that too. Um, we can take a look, uh, for example, uh, let's see, how about foreign policy? Um, so those before were called mini simulations. You'll see some were just called simulations. Um, those are the, uh, the longer ones. Again, two, three, four day experience they involve a little bit of research, a little bit of writing. Um, here's one about uh, unrest in Bahrain. It's about uh, you know, civil unrest and repression from authoritarian governments there. That's a, that's a historical one. Um, here's another historical one about Boko Haram, the terrorist group in Nigeria. Um, if you are familiar with our offerings, if you've been using them before, um, this is model diplomacy. We've taken, these used to be branded as model diplomacy. We've combined everything under one brand. Um, and so the, those, those you know, full model diplomacy simulations, uh, we now simply call simulations and you find them on the CFR education website alongside all of our other offerings. Um, and those mini simulations that we looked at a minute ago, they also used to live on the Model Diplomacy website and they also have been rebranded. So if you are a, a longtime user, um, still there, vast majority of the content made the move to the new website, um, just have a new coat of paint, slightly different naming, um, but they are there, it's the same great activities. Um, so those were mini simulations, full simulations. Um, the last thing that I will point out, um, if you are aware of CFR's larger um, Efforts, we are, as I mentioned at the top, a think tank. Um, and so among other things, we have fellows, they do research and they publish books. Um, and for many, many of the books that they've published, um, I think our, our uh, archive here goes back almost a decade, um, we have book guides. So for example, here's a book, here's a book guide for a book called Realism and Democracy. It was published by Elliot Abrams, one of our senior fellows. 
Um, and we've got quick introduction, a summary of the book. Um, and if you are someone who is teaching that book in your classroom, um, we have some discussion questions categorized by what kind of course you might be teaching, some additional readings you might be interested in. If you click here, you can um, you know, go learn more about the book, maybe buy a copy for your classroom. Um, so those are all there um, for books published by CFR fellows. Last thing that I wanna point you to, I'm back on the, that teach page. I just clicked on teach at the top of the window. If you have specific needs, you're teaching a particular AP class, you're teaching a particular uh, international baccalaureate class, um, maybe you are, uh, you know, focus on a particular topic, the war between Israel and Hamas, the war in Ukraine, maybe your curriculum is, you know, organized around the, the sustainable development goals, um, we have some alignments for you. So let's say your AP US history, you can click through you're familiar with the AP US history curriculum, you know, it's organized in nine units. Um, we've organized this page into nine units and links to the readings, uh, you know, that might be relevant to each unit that you're preparing for. Um, we're much stronger as we get into the 20th century, uh, a lot more options, um, but a little bit of something for everybody, uh, depending on what topic you're, you're working on, um, we have stuff for you. Um, and then likewise, if your students are, are asking questions, you know, what's going on in the war in Ukraine, um, here are, are some great links uh, that you might want to check out both, uh, you know, from CFR education and then also from um, the rest of CFR as an organization. All right. Um, last thing that I want to point out to you about finding resources. So we do have this big fat search bar at the top. Um, and this is actually, I think, maybe my favorite feature of the new website. The search is great. Um, search on our old site, sometimes helpful, sometimes a little bit less. Search on this site is fantastic. Let's say that I am teaching about development, economic development, pretty common topic. And I'm, I'm particularly interested, gosh, I really want to talk about Korea. What do we have? Search for de development, Korea. And here's a great reading, two Koreas, two development policies. And click right through. And then we have some other resources about development and uh, Korea as well. Over on the left, just like many search functions, you can filter, pick which topic you're most interested in. You can also search by resource type. Are you looking for a reading? Are you looking for a timeline? Are you looking for a video? Um, and you can also look, hey, I'm teaching AP World History. Is there anything that's going to be really well aligned with that? Is there anything going to be really well aligned with uh, you know, just a regular US history course or world history course? Um, you can filter things down. The real power user move here though, and I really like this, you really want to you know, drill down, find what you want. You can just do a blank search. So I haven't typed anything in here. I'm just going to go ahead and click search. And this gets me a list of all 671 items uh, that we have on our website. Um, and so you can go, you know, let's say I know exactly what I want. Maybe I'm particularly interested uh, you know, in learning journeys. Learning journeys are, um, we've got some examples of uh, grabbing different readings from around our website and curating them into a little bit of a journey. Lead students through in order to help them build, you know, some deeper understanding. Here's one called, What Did COVID Reveal uh, About Our World? Quick introduction. Um, and then we take folks into how were vaccines developed? Uh, which then connects to a more general question about domestic and foreign policy and how do those two realms of policymaking fit together. Um, and then we take a look at some of the unequal consequences uh, of COVID-19, um, which is a really great example of, you know, some of that theoretical question about domestic and foreign policy um, and, uh, you know, how did it really shake out um, in reality in a specific uh, situation. So those are our learning journeys. Just a couple more things I'm going to show you, but I'll remind you, if you've got questions, drop them in the Q&A, please do. Um, under the About section, um, we have some great events. Um, you'll see we have both um, some upcoming events. Here's the event that you're at right now. Um, but we also have, uh, for example, for um, 
Let's see, for higher ed instructors, for example, like here's a global affairs expert webinar about US and China foreign policy. Um, if you teach higher ed, you or your students want to come and hear from an expert talking about the US and China who wouldn't be interested in that. Click the link, find out how to sign up. We'd love to have you there. Um, for high school teachers, we have a great event that we are not allowed to announce until Friday. Uh, so check back um, and we will be uh, talking uh, about elections, how to teach them. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so keep an eye on, uh, on this space. Um, in addition to these upcoming events, if you scroll down far enough, you get to past events. Um, and so we have recordings of a lot of past events here um, that you can um, you know, watch the recording, get caught up on um, you know, all of these global affairs events. Um, or let's see. You know, and um, you know all kinds of topics. So check them out. Um, the last thing that I will point out um, is, as we head to Q and A, um, please sign up for our newsletter. We'd love to have you, um, uh, you know, follow along with us. If you sign up for our newsletter, you will get an email once a week uh, on Sundays. We're not going to sign you up for seventeen other things. We're not going to bug you every day. Um, it's just about sharing with you relevant resources, upcoming events you might be interested in, just about CFR education. Um, we'd love to have you join us. We also um, are on social media, Twitter, Facebook. Um, check us out there as well. All right. So we have a couple minutes left. Um, I see some questions. Let's see. Um, I have a question in the Q&A box. If you have a question, please stick it in the Q&A box as well. Um, do you have a forum for students and or educators to offer feedback and suggested topics for your CFR education website? Um, we don't have a forum, but we are always happy to hear from you. Um, if you check out the bottom of our website, um, there you can see, you click there for the Facebook, click there for the, um, for the, I still call it Twitter. We're gonna call it Twitter. Um, there, you know, for our YouTube page. Um, and then if you click on this envelope, um, you can send us an email. We'd love to hear suggestions, um, topics that you think might be helpful for us to cover um, and, and so on. All right. Um, so yeah, always love to hear from instructors, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what you'd like to see. Can't promise we can do everything for everyone, but it's always good for us to hear. Uh, let's see. Um, does CFR education have any content around the elections? Yes. Give our education. Um, so our group, um, we have um, a couple of resources. I'm searching for ballot here because I know that's part of the title. Remember I spoke about learning journeys a minute ago. Um, this is a learning journey we've put together um, for historical elections uh, that uh, were involved with, um, involved some foreign policy topics. Uh, we picked 19th century because, you know, a lot of people teach chronologically and it's the fall. So you're probably still in the 19th century. Um, but some great, like looking at historical foreign policy questions and then connecting them to some of the foreign policy questions today. Um, so check those out. Um, I will also say, um, if you head to our website or you follow us on social media or you're in our newsletter, um, you'll see you can get these, these readings as a newsletter. Um, also, if you head to CFR.org, so the, the website for the, the overall organization, lots of information there as well. Our fellows are, are, are writing about it and doing, doing all kinds of things. Does this integrate with an LMS? Do students need an account? No, no account needed. Um, does it integrate with an LMS? Not at this time, um, except insofar as like we have stuff as Google Docs and if you know Google Docs are, you know, work well with your LMS, one step a little bit closer. Um, to to when you need them. It is something we're working on. If that's something that's super important to you or is going to help you and maybe your entire university adopt this, uh, we'd love to hear from you, particularly which LMS you're really excited about. Uh, you know, let us know, use that email box uh, or leave, uh, leave my colleague a note in the chat um, and we'll uh, grab that up. Someone's asking about CFR education ambassadors. It's an opportunity that the application has now closed. Um, we should be back to folks the end of next week. Um, if being more involved in CFR education is something that appeals to you, um, check back next spring under that about page up here. 
you can see there's a page about the ambassador program. We'll be taking applications again in the spring. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have a couple of questions about simulations. Is there a simulation for the Middle East? Yes. Um, that Bahrain one that I mentioned just a minute ago um, is, uh, is a great one. Um, let's just go ahead and do that blank search trick and uh, I will show you what we've got. Let's see, these are teaching resources. So we want simulations. Um, I believe the Bahrain may be the only one. Uh, uh, drones in Pakistan, yes. To the extent that you consider Pakistan part of the Middle East, you may, you may not. The drone question certainly um, applies to other parts of the Middle East as well. That's a great one, thinking about drone policy. Um, but that, and then this one, unrest in Bahrain, um, those would be the two. Uh, a couple of questioners are alluding to the fact we used to have more in the Middle East. Um, there are a couple that... Um, we have not kept around um, either because they need to be updated or they were, you know, a couple of them just frankly were not very popular. Um, but please let us know if there's something you're missing you really wish we had. Um, uh, we'd love to hear about that. All right. Um, I will just say we are at the bottom of the hour. Um, I'll continue answering questions. If you've got questions, throw them in there. I will keep going. But also, I will completely understand my feelings will not be hurt if you need to run off and revise your syllabus, get ready for class tomorrow, whatever that is. Um, but I will just keep going through these questions and feel free to keep them coming in, uh, you know, in the Q&A. Uh, we allowed to add. Let's see. Israeli-Palestinian impasse was great. Are you going to bring it back as a reference to another uh, simulation? Um, it was a good one. You know, not very many people agreed with you, unfortunately. I don't know why, uh, but it was not a very popular um, simulation. So it, uh, it got retired. Obviously, um, after the events of last October, we would have had to do quite a bit to update it. Um, and um, it, it did not rise to the top of the list because um, you know, we've got a lot of stuff to keep up to date. Um, we do have a lot of other resources about teaching um, about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, I'll point you back to the teach page. Um, you scroll down, resources on the Israel-Hamas war. Um, it's not just about the conflict that's been going on for the last 10 months. Um, it does dig back into the history of the conflict um, with a great timeline about the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Actually, much of the content in that timeline is derived from that simulation that that, that questioner was just asking about. Um, more about the policy of it, what's going on today, but then also some deeper questions about humanitarian issues. How does international law uh, shape some of this? What could the future hold? Um, and then some links to places where you can learn some more uh, really up-to-date analysis and links to history. Um, so we do have a lot of options that that particular simulation um, has has been uh, put to bed for for the moment. Um, but I hear you. Um, thank you for sharing that. We'll definitely keep that in mind as we look at our calendar of content for, for the coming months and year. Um, to see if I, da, 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 I think. That's most of them. So a question about CFR membership and events in New York and DC. Let me take the second part of that first. Um, so we do have uh, some events that are open to the public and some events that are open to uh, teachers, instructors specifically. Um, the ones that are for, for instructors, um, you can find again, if you head to about um, and to our events page, um, we would love to have you at these. Um, some of them are specifically higher ed. Some are open to everybody. Some are geared towards higher height towards high school. Um, those are great. If you join our newsletter, when we do have public events, um, you'll hear about them. Uh, most of our events are also available on um, uh, recorded, both on the CFR website and on YouTube. Um, memberships of CFR, I mentioned at the top, we're a think tank. We are also a membership organization. Um, I do not work in that department, um, but if you head to the CFR website um, and check out, uh, you can click through and, and learn about membership. It's a process, they take applications once or twice a year and people write letters for you and all that. Um, certainly welcome to do that. I am the absolute wrong person to ask questions about it. I apologize. 
Um, but I do know there's a lot of great things, even if you're not a member, um, things on this page, uh, specifically for educators, um, and then plenty on the CFR website um, that you can read, watch, um, and learn there um, that are open to just anybody. Um, so let's see. I think those are all the questions that I've been asked. I'm going to pause for a moment because I know on the internet, uh, sometimes people take it takes a moment to type your question if something just occurred to you. I'll give folks a moment to, uh, oh, thank you for that clapping emoji, whoever just sent that, I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I hope that was really helpful. As I, I may have said, and were alluded to, I, I taught for a decade. I know where you all are right now. You've either just started or you're about to start um, and uh, you've got a million ideas going through your head and syllabus that needs to be revised and student lists that are changing. So um, really thank you for taking the time to uh, spend a couple minutes with us. I really hope that all of this information has been helpful to you, something that you can either stick into your syllabus right now or that'll stick in your in your memory so that when you need a little something extra about one of these topics later in the school year, you'll remember us, come back, check it out. And I really will, will emphasize, I'll, I'll close back here, um, scan that QR code, sign up for our newsletter, um, and or um, you know, at the bottom of our webpage, you can follow us on, on your social media platform of choice. Um, and we'll just gently keep you, in, you know, keep you up to date on some of the new things that we have coming out. Um, so we do have some cool stuff that we'll be releasing this year as it becomes ready. Um, and then we also, you know, we know when fo what folks tend to be teaching. Um, you know, folks tend to do certain things at the beginning of the year, got needs as you get to the end of the semester. Um, and so we try to bubble up things that will be particularly relevant um, to you where you are. Um, finally, really, please do email us. Um, you know, use that link at the bottom of our website. We'd love to hear from folks, suggestions, questions, can't find something, not sure how something works. Um, please let us know. All right. Well, I haven't seen any new questions come in. Um, so I think I will leave it there. Thank you again so much, all of you, for joining us this evening. Um, best of luck with the first day of school in the first few weeks here, um, and uh, hope you have a great fall. Thanks so much.